Okay, this is section 8.7 resonance. Now we're going to talk about the possibility of more than one reasonable or equivalent Lewis structure for a particular species. So the example I want to start off with is ozone. Ozone has the chemical formula O3. It's triatomic oxygen. So let's draw a Lewis structure. There are three oxygen atoms connected to each other. Since oxygen is in group 6A, there are six electrons and there's three oxygens. So that would be 18 valence electrons. We've already used four so that gives us 14 remaining. So what I will do is I will distribute six around each surrounding atom so that the surrounding atoms are up to eight. And then that is 12 that I've just used there, so I have two more. So I'm gonna put them on the central atom. So again, the idea is you fill out the surrounding atoms as octet and then if you have any remaining electrons, they go on the central atom. So the central atom has two uh, electrons in the form of a lone pair, and it has a single bond to each surrounding oxygen atom. So we could, using the methods we've talked about, devise a way to draw a structure where we move one pair of electrons, we push a pair of electrons from this oxygen on the left, So instead of being a lone pair, it becomes an extra bond to the central atom. And that would result in an octet for the central atom, right? So erase that and make that dot a little bigger. There we go. Okay, so that would work. They're certainly fine. Each atom has eight electrons. If you do a formal charge calculation for each oxygen atom, you'll find that the oxygen on the left has a formal charge of zero. Remember, it's valence electrons minus associated electrons. The oxygen in the center is plus one, which is a little odd, considering that it's a highly electronegative atom. Generally, we look for negative formal charges on highly electronegative atoms. But the atom that it's bonded to is another oxygen. And this oxygen on the right has a formal charge of negative one. So here's our structure. We have a double bond between the central atom and the atom on the left, and then a single to the one on the right. Three lone pairs to the atom on the right, two lone pairs to the atom on the left. There's our Lewis structure. It turns out we could have done it a different way. What we could have done is instead of pushing this pair of electrons over, we could have pushed one of these pairs from the other oxygen. Why not, right? There is no reason we would pick one oxygen to push the electrons from over the other. So if we do that, here's what happens. We now have a single bond and three lone pairs to the oxygen on the left, and then a double bond to the oxygen, and two lone pairs to the oxygen on the right. And if you do formal charge calculations, you get negative one, positive one, and zero. So even though the locations of the double bonds and the locations of the um, Lone pairs are different in these two structures that I've drawn. Their formal charges work out the same. It's just where the formal charge of negative one is and where the formal charge of zero is. So there's really no preferred structure of these two. They're equivalent to each other. So what it turns out is that each of these two structures are equally probable. And what happens is, in nature, these two structures average out, meaning the electrons being waves will distribute themselves in such a way as to minimize the energy of the molecule. And the way that it does that in this case is by taking an average 
of these two structures. I'll call this structure two, I'll call this structure one, and it's an average of structure one and structure two, the average of the two. Now, how do we represent an average? It's, very, it's not easy with Lewis structures because Lewis structures have dots to represent electrons. How do you represent an average of these dots? One way to do it is just to indicate, you don't put the lone pairs in, but to indicate that there's more than a bond between these two atoms and more than a bond between these two atoms, but less than a bond between those two atoms. So if you think about it, over here we have a double bond. There's two bonds here. But in this structure, there's only one. The average of two bonds and one bonds is one and a half bonds. So really, we have one and a half bonds. And you might say, well, how can you have one and a half bonds? Well, it's because these are waves. So it's really just the probabilities we're talking about anyways. What's the probability the electrons occupy specific regions of space? So on average, there's one and a half bonds here and one and a half bonds there. Okay. So this is one way to represent the average, but generally most textbooks will ask you, draw the reasonable Lewis structures that we would expect for this molecule or this ion. And in this case, these are the two reasonable structures we would expect, okay? Ozone one, ozone two. Now, keep in mind, we're not moving the atoms around. All we're doing is repositioning electrons. So let me show you another example And this example would be the carbonate ion. The carbonate ion is CO3 negative 2. Okay, so CO3 with two negatives. Two extra valence electrons. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw here in the center the skeletal arrangement of the atoms. So you just draw the symbols of the atoms with a single bond. And then you go through your valence electrons calculations. Carbon is in column 4A, so it has four valence electrons. Oxygen is in column 6, and there's three of them, so that's three times six. But you also have this negative two charge, so that means you add two more electrons. So that would be 24 electrons. We've already used six because there's three bonds, so that leaves us with 18. So again, Get the surrounding atoms up to eight by putting in three lone pairs, right? If you put in three lone pairs, now that oxygen has eight. Do that three times, and you've used up 18 electrons, and we've got all of our electrons. Keep in mind, it's a charge, it's an ion, so we're going to indicate that with the bracket notation, okay? Now, the next step is to say, okay, let's get that carbon atom in the center up to eight by pushing a pair of electrons from one of the oxygens. But take a look how many oxygens we have. We have three of them. So that means we have three choices. We could take a pair from the oxygen on the left, a pair from the oxygen on the right, or a pair from oxygen below. So it turns out we've got three possibilities. So this is going to take up some room here, right? We're going to have three possible structures here. I'll number them. Three possible structures. So in the first possibility, I'll call this one, we're going to push this pair over here and share another pair of electrons with the oxygen on the left. In the second possibility, we could push this one instead, not both, just the other one. That would be structure two. And then in the third possibility, we could push a pair of electrons here. It doesn't matter which pair of electrons you pick from a particular atom. If there's three lone pairs, you could pick any of them. Generally, people will pick the lone pair that they've drawn closer to the other atom. It's just it's a little awkward to draw it from the pair that's further away from the central atom. Okay, So that will give us a double bond. In structure one, the double bond will appear over here on the left, and we'll have two lone pairs on that oxygen, three lone pairs on this oxygen, and three lone pairs on this oxygen. Okay, so there's one structure. The next structure 
the, uh, the second bond is from the oxygen in below. So that's this right here. And then the single bonds are going to appear on these oxygens here on the left and right. Okay, so that's number two. And then number three, the double bond is going to be the one on the right. So there's our three structures. So what we would claim is that if you go through a formal charge calculation, in all cases, the carbon has a formal charge of zero, which is good. The oxygen that has a double bond has a formal charge of zero. The oxygen that has a single bond has a formal charge of minus one. So two of the atoms have formal charges of minus one two of the oxygen atoms, and there you go. Okay, equivalent. So what we would claim is that it does not actually exist. The structure of carbonate, according to Lewis theory, does not exist as any of these structures. It's an average of the three. Okay, so again, how would you draw that? Well. One way is to say, hey, we've got an extra bond in here, so we're going to spread that bond out in between all three oxygen atoms. We're not going to draw the, the lone pairs or anything like that. How many bonds would we expect for each of these arrangements? Well, you have in this structure over here a double bond, but in this structure you have a single and in this one you have a single. So the average of a double and a double and a, of a double a single and a single, that's four divided by three, is four thirds of a bond. So that's one and a third bond. Okay? And the same thing here. This would be one and a third bonds. And one and a third bonds. Okay? So if you add all those up, you get four bonds, which is what you have in the traditional Lewis structure anyways, okay? So it's an average of the three structures with an extra bond that has been distributed across all four atoms. Distributing those, that extra bond across all four atoms increases the stability of the structure. That's called resonance, okay? Now, there is a famous molecule that I want to draw your attention to. It's called benzene. Benzene is famous because it's a aromatic ring. And we won't go into the theory of aromaticity in this lecture. That's something you would learn about in organic chemistry. But it turns out that the arrangement of benzene, I'm going to, oops, let me erase that. Benzene has six carbon atoms arranged in a ring, a hexagon, essentially. A planar ring, meaning it's two-dimensional. It's a plane. So there's our six carbon atoms. And then a hydrogen atom is attached to each carbon. Okay, so C6H6. But if you'll notice, the carbon atoms only have six electrons. So they need eight. It turns out that if you add up all the electrons... Carbon is in 4A, column 4A, so that's 6 times 4. Hydrogen is in column 1A, so that's 6 times 1. You have 30 electrons. So far, we've only allocated uh, 24 of them, right? If you add up all these single bonds, you get 24 electrons. So what happens is you get this arrangement. There's our extra 6 electrons to get us up to 30. So these are what are called alternating double bonds. Meaning that each carbon atom has a double bond, but not to both atoms connected to it. So for example, this carbon here has a double bond to this carbon up here. Sometimes we number them. One, two, three, four, 
five, six. We number the carbon atoms. But this carbon number two has a single to carbon three, but a double to carbon one. So it turns out that if we had not arranged the atoms, again, resonance is not an issue of arranging atoms. That's called isomerism. Resonance is an issue of how you arrange electrons in Lewis structures. It's really an, an artifact of how we deal with Lewis structures. It turns out we could have done it this way. We could have put the double bonds, the alternating double bonds here. So again, here's carbon one, two, three, four, five, six. Either of those two structures is fine, right? They're, they're equivalent to each other. Everything's octet, formal charges are zero in all atoms. So it turns out it's an average of those two. It turns out this is an example where two structures are possible, so the electrons actually spread out across all of them, both of all of the carbon atoms. So it, it, what ends up happening is we get our average, and the average can be represented like this. We distribute the six electrons in the double bonds, right? That extra bond between each hydrogen atom, in between each carbon atom. We distribute the six electrons as a circle to indicate that they are, quote, delocalized electrons. Those electrons do not belong to any of the carbon atoms. They belong to all six of the carbon atoms. So they're distributed all the way across here. And that's called delocalization. That is an artifact, a consequence of this phenomenon called resonance. So if you wanted to go through it, what you'd find is that each carbon is bonded to another carbon by one and a half bonds. On average, you get one and a half bonds. Okay? So again, it's not the positions of the atoms we're talking about. It's the positions of the electrons, not the nuclei, but the, the electrons themselves. So for example, if I said, hey, I've got this molecule N2O, and here's my two structures, this is an issue of what's called isomerism because you're changing the positions of the atoms. It's not an issue of resonance. The issue of resonance is whether you have, let's say, a double bond there and a single here or a double bond here and a single there. That's the issue of resonance that we're talking about. The positions of electrons in the Lewis structure, not the positions of the actual atoms.